way how thick of the fat and content it is. What, me, me or the Your, your me books, the books. <laughs> your books are very, very um, dense and content in fact. Do you know absolutely everything off by heart that you stand up there and can recite the dates and absolutely everything on all the research you've done? Well, well yeah, I mean, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking, um, I, um, I don't have a script, I don't work from a script, yeah. I just, just talk and it comes. And, uh, and the other thing is, if you forget something, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, I forgot something, I feel an idiot. No, I don't, I don't feel an idiot. I mean, they'll, they, they'll, they'll, they'll like what I do, or they won't like what I do, or they'll be somewhere in between. Either way, the sun comes up tomorrow, you know? That's a wonderful attitude to have. I think if everybody can embrace that, we'd all be a lot better off, truly. Yeah, and also not being um, attached to how it's received, because um, if you are attached to how it's received, it, on one level, you are saying that the only good outcome is that people agree with what you're saying. Well, it's their right to disagree, it's their right to reject it. And, and once I've opened my mouth and the words are gone, how they're received is none of my business. It's the business of the people that are hearing it. I, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to persuade anybody of anything. If I was, I would be just someone else standing up on a stage saying, I have all the answers, if you don't believe me, you're wrong. We drown it in those people. I don't want to be another one. Well, the reason uh, the, the personal journey and the information that I uncover are fundamentally connected is because to uncover the kind of information that I have, which from a norm perspective is bizarre and outrageous and out there, you first have to be deprogrammed enough a, to go where the information takes you rather than preconceived idea that says that's not possible because it's too fantastic. And also deprogrammed enough to, to know that when you put that information out, you're going to get mass ridicule and stuff, but not to care because the information is what matters, not how people receive it and how people perceive you. And what um, I can see now looking uh, back is how my journey, and it's not just me, it's everybody, um, how my journey uh, uh, of personal deprogramming, of unlearning what we're programmed to believe, and what I uncover are fundamentally connected, because we, we are consciousness, we are infinite consciousness, we are all that is, has been, and ever will be. And what, what we're doing is having an experience within this tiny frequency range called visible light. What happens because of the way the control system set up, we are pressured from the moment we come from the womb to identify self with the vehicle, the body-mind, and forget that we are consciousness having an experience through the body-mind of this reality. It's a bit like sitting at the computer and going on the internet and then becoming the computer instead of the person sitting at the desk observing the internet through the computer. And it's this fundamental misunderstanding, programmed, encouraged, pressured misunderstanding of self-identity, of self, that holds humanity in servitude, going through its, quote, life, believing that it, it's, it's, it's its name, it's its job, it's its family, it's its race, it's its religion, when they're all just experiences. Because I, I, I would say this, you know, you know, we, um, we talk about incarnating, yeah. which gives the feeling of coming into something. We don't come into something. And then when we die, we go out. Well, these are all kind of illusions that we as consciousness, who we really are, we don't go anywhere. We look through the telescope lens and observe this reality um, as an experience. Because, if, like I say, if I'm going on the internet, I can't just sit here and go on the internet. 
I need, a, I need a, a conduit, I need an interface to experience the internet, and we call that a computer. Well, consciousness experiencing this virtual reality, which is what it is, quite provable fact, needs an interface, and it is the body-mind, right? What happens in the way that, that the whole control structure is, the whole foundation of it is this, is to get us to move our point of observation into the computer and identify with the computer. So what you tell to, you get them to do is, is, is say, um, I'm David Icke, born in Leicester in 1952. That's who I am. No, I'm not. That's not me. They're, I'm not David Icke. David Icke's my experience. I'm infinite consciousness like you are and everyone else's. And um, so the consciousness is observing through this lens of the body into this reality. And what we call death, it's what I call putting, putting the telescope down. You know, okay, I've had enough of that. He's died. No, he's just put the telescope down. Yeah. Consciousness hasn't gone anywhere. It's, it's just ceasing to observe through the lens. Uh, uh, but because of the way um, the illusion is constructed and the way we decode the illusion, we see things as coming in and going out and moving around and having space between them and time and all the rest of it. They're just illusions. They're just experiences. Uh, and we've got caught in the illusion. And, and you see, this global secret society network, um, which manipulates global events, is all based on manipulating hum humanity's um, perception of self in the world. And the reason it's a secret society network, and all the secret societies are fundamentally compartmentalized. I mean, even in a thing like the Freemasons, the vast majority of Freemasons are in the bottom three levels of degree. They, have got, they don't know damn about what happens higher up. And those at the top of the Freemasons don't realize there's other levels above that that no one tells them about, where only the chosen few go. And the reason there's all this compartmentalization of knowledge, which um, hoards the real advanced knowledge right at the top among the very few, is because there, is held the knowledge of reality, yeah. the kind of understanding that I've just been describing. Now imagine if you know that's how reality is, and the, the, you get the people, because of the way you structure the education system, and this, what we bravely call science and the media and all the rest of it, and religion, they think all this is real. They think this is who they are. They think that they see everything in terms of apartness instead of unity, you are in an incredible position of control because you understand reality and the people you are controlling and manipulating have not got a clue what reality they're experiencing. I mean, we reach um, what, what we think is the cutting edge of human knowledge. It ain't really. It's de not definitely, but it's what we perceive it to be. And you know, oh yeah, we fly to the moon and we've got nanotechnology and it's really great. And then you stop someone and you say, who are you? Where are you? What are you doing here? What? <laughs> and if they don't parrot some religious reaction to you, some religious belief system to you to answer to those questions, um, then they'll say, I don't know. We're at the cutting edge of human awareness in the 21st century as we perceive time, and we can't answer questions like, who are we? Where are we? What are we doing here? What's going on? But the reason the vast numbers of people can't do that because the control system is structured so that from cradle to grave that knowledge is kept from them and the ability to expand consciousness and access their knowledge that way is suppressed and suppressed and suppressed and suppressed um, and um, but what's what's brilliant now is that this uh, control system is losing control it may seem to be getting more control with more legislation and more police uh, imposition and militarization of the police and more data, more surveillance. Yeah, in the play out world, it seems to have more control. What it's losing control of is the fundamental foundation of its control, and that is the sense of human perception that we are what they tell us we are instead of understanding what we really are. And the more that happens, the more control, the control system as it plays out in all those things will fall. Because it is going down. It's going to go forward for a few years yet. My, my feeling is around 2016, life in this reality is going to transform. Um, and it's going to transform because uh, this is, a, rea this is, a, this is a, uh, a virtual reality. Quite provable fact. You know in the Matrix where... Um, Neo says, 
within a computer program, this isn't real. And Morpheus says, well, what is real? Yes, yes. If you're talking about what you can see, touch, taste, hear, feel, whatever, um, then real is just electrical signals interpreted by your brain. And that's what it is. You know, this, this, this reality seems to be outside of us. It only exists in here. Yeah. And then you can get deeper and you think, exist in where? Um, and so what our, what our reality is doing, or what this body computer is doing at this interface, is taking vibrational information encoded in light, encoded in the photons of light, it's turning it into electrical information, same information, different form, passing it to the brain, the brain's decoding that information into what is a holographic illusory 3D world that appears to be solid. And because it's illusory, you can start to see why quantum physics has this bewildering contradiction between the fact that they say the world is made up of atoms, this solid world, and yet they know that atoms have no solidity. Huh? How can that be? There is no contradiction. Atoms are not solid because they're not creating a solid world, because the world ain't solid. It's a construct. Because we get caught in this idea that um, everything's real, then those that know it's not real are in, a, like I say, a fundamental uh, position of, um, of, of, of power and, and uh, control. And this virtual reality that I'm describing, whereby we are taking information, just information, and turning it into an apparent reality, this virtual reality is much bigger than we are currently decoding because the part of the virtual reality that we decode is visible light, which is so tiny, it's ridiculous. There is, a, there is vast, vast areas, like 95 and more percent of this universe, this virtual reality universe, that they call dark matter, dark energy, and various other names, that are not dark at all. If you went into those realms of reality, it wouldn't be pitch black. They only call it dark because it's outside of what we call visible light. If we were in those areas of dark energy, we'd still be able to see it would be a reality because yeah. we'd be coding it into that reality. And we once, I'm absolutely convinced as I've looked at this, we once before an, an, an intervention, which is behind this control system, used to decode a much greater frequency range of this virtual reality universe. You know in China, um, they can't access vast amounts of the internet because it's firewalled off by the authorities, right? Yeah. Now, it's the reality that we're experiencing, and we, people talk about dimensions and densities, and yeah, all, all that stuff, but what decides the range of frequency that we decode into a, a apparent world is not the world itself. It's the receiver decoder, right? Yeah. It's us that decide in the body computer system that decides how wide the frequency range of our reality is. And if you mess with it, mess with the body computer genetically, and you look at the, all these ancient texts and legends all over the world about the manipulation of the human form and the, the fall of man, the fall of man, right? Or the fall of humanity, politically correct, you see. Uh, the fall of humanity. Um, and look at the Bible. What's the symbolic, I would say more than symbolic, um, perpetrator of the fall of man? The serpent. The serpent is the oldest form by far of any um, worship. It's been tracked back 70,000 years so far. And you look at books um, that have... Uh, researched serpent worship around the world and they say it the same it is not only the oldest form of religious worship it is the most prevalent all universal um, form of worship all over the world if you go far enough back and these reptilian entities that um, are I would strongly suggest are behind this whole control system um, were perceived by the ancients as gods because they had abilities to do things that they couldn't do and so they became the the, the, 
center of, of, of worship. And what I suggest, um, and I, I've got, I'm writing a new book at the moment, which is if people think what I've written so far is like far out and, 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 and crazy, well, they should read this bugger. I'm not talking about the content at the moment because there's a few dots I want to bring it all out as one unit. <laughs> but I've, I've realized how, how they've done this. Um, very clearly, uh, what they've done is hacked in to the virtual reality universe, which includes all the dark matter and dark energy and all of the universe, okay. and they have isolated us into a tiny fraction of that virtual reality universe. In even more than symbolic terms, the very theme of it is exactly the same as firewalling off the internet in China, so the internet that we can access Okay. The Chinese computers cannot access. Well, they've done that to humanity. So you'd say that other humanoid races, perhaps, who have the greater abilities and that are like us in form, but can do so many more things? Are well, we the only ones that are like this? The, the, the thing is that um, everything is consciousness. Everything is, is one consciousness. The question is, from what point within that consciousness are you observing reality? Um, it's not that these reptilian entities are not consciousness or what, whatever, other some of them are, are, are constructs, but they're still energy, they're still part of the consciousness, even the constructs. Um, but they're observing from a, a, a point of view which makes them behave and act in a certain way, and that point of view is terror, fear. You know, it, 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 if you are not in fear and you are at peace with yourself, you're at peace with life unfolding as it unfolds. It is what it is. It's just an experience. If you're consumed by fear, what you then seek to do is control your reality as best you can because that sense of fear, that sense of insecurity, means you cannot find security in not being able to call the next experience. So what these reptilian entities do, because they are so consumed by fear and so consumed by insecurity, is that they seek to control everything. So there is no, um, there is no situation that is uncallable and unpredictable. Unpredictability, people in fear and insecurity, they can't stand unpredictability. They want to know the next move, right? Um, and so the way they've structured society is to control all sides in everything. That's what they've sought to do. So for instance, um, the British Conservative Party is controlled by the same force that controls the British Labour Party. The Republican Party in America is controlled by the same force that controls the Democratic Party. So whoever wins those elections, in this farce we call elections, the control system still controls the government. Might have a different name every now and again, because we've got the ability to vote and change the world, haven't we? They keep telling us that. No, no. The same force is in control. Different masks on the same face. Symbolically, um, if you want to know the result of a football match, because you're so insecure, you couldn't stand sitting there watching the outcome, not knowing what it was going to be, then it's no good controlling one side, you will influence the game. What you have to do is control both sides, because then, uh, before the game starts, you know the result. And so all over society, they're controlling all these different apparent opposites, and all these different expressions and offshoots of the opposites, so that they can call the outcome all the time. It comes from desperate insecurity. Now, if you're desperately insecure, coming around to this point you were making about humans having greater potential, it's not that we have greater potential, because we are infinite consciousness, and these entities are infinite consciousness. The reason we have greater potential at the point, different points of observation, is that we are less caught in the... Uh, the box, if you like, than they are. Because if you're in this state of insecurity and you need to feed that by having control over everything, then you are in a very, very limited sense of awareness and a limited sense of, of, of who you are. 
the more limited the sense of who you are, the more limited the expression of who you are can be. If you think you're little me, I've got no power, you will live a life of little me, I've got no power. Not because you're little me and have no power, but because that's your perception and so that's your experience. And to, for these entities to control uh, humanity, they've had to s seek to put us in a smaller box of awareness than they are in. And they, um, what do they say? In the land of the blind, the one-eyed one -eyed man is king, right? So they're in this box of insecurity and fear and disconnection from the full magnitude of who they are. And to control us, they've had to put us in a smaller box of awareness than, than they're in. And they've done this by structuring society to constantly program us with a sense of limitation, a sense of I can't, a sense of um, apartness from everything else, a sense of um, I was born into this uh, class of society, so, so I, I, I will never do that, and all these limitations on potential. And yet, the difference between that and that and that is merely perception. So we can go from, and our people are going, from little me, I'm in this box and all the rest of it, to I'm infinite consciousness of an experience. And you can do it like that. And more and more people are doing it like that. And then their life changes, they're, they're, everything changes. Because the, the point from which we perceive reality dictates the energetic state that we're in. Yeah. So if, if I um, perceive little me, then I'm putting out the, 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 the vibration of little me um, and, and that vibration will draw in other fields, other vibrational fields that sync with what we're putting out and they will be people, places, ways of life, experiences that confirm and implant an experience of little me, I've got no power. Once you break that sense of self, that self-identity, and you move from little me, name, job, etc., to I am infinite consciousness of an experience, there's a massive energy shift brought about by that movement of perception. And now a very different energy is going out and different people, places, ways of life and experiences come towards you, your life transforms. And then the more you expand, the more you, you, you think in terms of limita uh, 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 the end of limitation and limitlessness, the more you stop thinking I can't and you realize I can and I am and the control system is now weeping in its beer <laughs> because it cannot control that level of awareness of self and self-identity. And that's why when you look at the structure of the system, it's all structured to hold us out of that self-awareness. Self the education system does it, just indoctrinates uh, a system of, of, of um, limitation, of identifying with the body, identifying with the name, identifying with the experiences who we are. The media is underpinning that 24-7, 24, 24, hey, watch our 24-hour channel and tw <laughs> 24 hours will tell you who you're not but what we want you to be. Go on, <laughs> turn us on. Hey. And, and so um, this is the fundamental uh, ground on which the whole control system imposes itself and on which the control system will collapse. And the question is, at what point do we reach collectively where the energy shift collectively is powerful enough to crack the system and break the hack because and break the firewalls that are holding us in a sense of limitation and um, I can't I mean you know you're on a computer in China you're trying to get on a website it won't go so you what do you think? Limitation. This, uh, this is me. I can only work in this area. Yeah. Break the firewall, which in the terms that I'm talking about is the, the perception of self, and suddenly the internet in its entirety becomes open to you. And all you've done is break the limitation that's holding you in this uh, sense of small. And we have the power to do that. And you know, one of, one of the things that 
that I, I, I see all the time, is the, and it's a great way of, of, of diverting people, is things that are dead simple are portrayed as terribly complex. It can't be that simple, mate. Ah, it is. It is. Uh, the idea, because the, the intellect, the left brain, the body computer level of decoding reality, it sees everything as complex. Why? Because it sees everything, the left brain anyway, sees everything as a part. And it, it's all complex because there's that bit there and there's that bit there and there's that bit there. But when you see the unity, everything's just an expression of the same thing. It's dead simple. Um, and it's not complex at all. So I, I see these, these gurus and these new age gurus and these other ones who talk about, oh, you have to work on yourself. No, you don't have to work on yourself at all. You just have to read the signs of what life is telling you. Because life is working on yourself. If, if, you, if you go through life and you watch the signs, the signs are telling you where your firewalls are, right? And sometimes they tell you where your firewalls are by bringing into your life complete pains in the arse who give you a bloody hard time and you'd rather they didn't, right? So true. But if you read the signs and you say, what does this pain in the arse say about me? What firewall within me does, does this person represent? Then the absolute acknowledgement of that brings the firewall down. It's that simple. As that firewall comes down, uh, you expand consciousness beyond it and suddenly you're now seeing things you couldn't see before. Uh, because you've moved your point of observation from here to here and, and it becomes a, a self-perpetuating process once you start uh, moving on it. And, and so if we watch the signs of life, and I, I, I use in this, in, this, in this new book this, um, this, this phrase, um, flow equals go, stuck equals chuck, or at least do what you're doing differently. Because life is meant to flow. Life ain't supposed to be a bitch and then you die. We, we're supposed to be expressing the uh, infinity of, of who we are. What happens is when we get caught in the program and sense of limitation, we put blocks on everybody thing. And, and where we're flowing dictates where life is telling us to go. It flows, go. Where we're, and what t tends to happen is, is people are encouraged or fall into the trap of deciding what they want the outcome to be before everything starts. So they go, I want to be this, I want to be that. Now, that might, might be what you want to be, but maybe that's not what you're here to experience and, and, and um, flow with. So, you want this, okay, there's a door, and what you want's on the other side. But if you look closely, mate, over here, there's a freaking great padlock on it. Now you can spend your life, if you want, trying to open that door, it's not gonna open. If it's stuck, chuck. Or at least say, why is it close to me? Is there another way of approaching this? Or you can say, you see that door over there? You see, it's swinging, look. It's a saloon door, it's swinging. You've only got to walk through it, no resistance. Flow equals go. Yeah. And if you follow these um, uh, signs, then life starts to move rather than become resistant to you. And as you read the signs of what life is telling you in the experiences you have, where your firewalls are to breaking out of the program, then the program and the firewalls start to fall. And you suddenly reach a point where instead of life living you, which is what happens to most people because the program lives them, we start living life because we become the consciousness that we are instead of the program that we're told we are. Uh, and this is the, these, are the, these, these are the foundations, like I say, of how the system controls us and how the system is going to fall. And the people in the middle are us, and, the, and, and that is a choice. Are we going to stay in the program and acquiesce to these, you know, juvenile, bloody control freaks? Or are we going to express our true consciousness and let them have an experience and see where their firewalls are? 
You know, have you ever investigated the link between Jim Morrison's Lizard King and the Reptilians? Was Morrison the MK Ultra? Perhaps his father was in the military. Do you know anything about that? Well, what, what I found interesting was reading a series of articles on the internet um, some time ago by uh, someone who actually loved the 60s and the music, but then started investigating um, some very strange coincidences that started the whole 60s thing going. And that was how many uh, key figures that, 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 that were instrumental in it turned out to be the, the, the children of, um, of military officers and um, intelligence officers in America, right? And when um, Kennedy was assassinated, Lyndon Johnson came in, and one of the reasons they assassinated Kennedy was they wanted to expand and um, massively advance the Vietnam War. But of course they needed an excuse for that. So when Lyndon Johnson came in, who was a total front man for this network of families, um, he and the military concocted this plan whereby they would sail American ships into a place called the Gulf of Tonkin. And then they would try to entice the Vietnam, uh, we call it Navy, Vietnamese ships to, to fire on them because they fired, the US fired first. What it seems to be, it turned out, is that the American ships fired and there was no response. So, you know, it kind of didn't work. So, okay, they never fired back. What do we do? We say they did, right? And so, then it was said, oh, American shipping has come, uh, 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 naval shipping has come under fire in the Gulf of Tonkin. And wh what did, what did uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson do? Immediately, we must um, expand our presence in, in, in Vietnam. This is, we can't accept this. The sea captain or the naval captain in charge of that flotilla involved in that scam of the Gulf of Tonkin was Jim Morrison's father. No yeah. way. And this, uh, this common theme that this guy's excellent research brought up made you think, well, hold on a second, there was more to the 60s, well, I knew there was by then, but it gets deeper. There was more to the 60s and the way that manifested than um, would at first appear to be the case, because this stuff, you know, oh, flowers and, and uh, oh yeah, okay, put a, flower in, put a flower in me gun, okay, okay, right? But inside the gun, just behind the flower is a bullet, okay, and I pull this trigger, no. No flower, okay? What they don't want is this balance point between awareness and streetwiseness. When I say awareness, I mean spirituality, for want of a word, and streetwiseness. The, we need both mm. because there's so many people that consider themselves spiritual who are so unstreetwise about the world, this control system plays them like a violin. You need this balance of both. And so when you look at the 1960s, on one level it seemed very nice, you know, oh, this, you know, love and light, and you hear it, yeah, okay, love and light, yeah, and? Okay, the, the, the control system's increasing all the time, more and more control, love and light. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so let's say it's love and light. <laughs> What's the answer to the, More love and light. And, and so it goes on. And, you know, for me, consciousness First of all, in its, in its balanced higher state, does not do fear. And it don't take shit either, right? And it doesn't uh, run away from what we need to do to face something we, we desire to change. And I see in what we call spirituality so many um, examples of how what is called spirituality is just an excuse to escape from facing what we need to face. Oh, just love and light and everything will be fine. Well, actually it won't. What we, what we need to do is to look this stuff in the face and, and not acquiesce to it and do what is necessary to change what we, we don't like. Not to run away because that is what a lot of this New Age stuff is about. I hear people say, whoa, in the new age, we've got to overcome fear. And then the same people say, that stuff that Ike talks about is frightening people, he should stop. 
Well, I thought you'd overcome fear. What are you talking about? Right? Either you've overcome fear and you can face the stuff, see what's going on and let's deal with it, or you haven't overcome fear, in which case you're running away uh, claiming that you've overcome fear. And it's, again, cognitive dissonance. It's lying to ourselves. I've overcome fear. <laughs> I, 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 who, who are you trying to convince me? <laughs> and, and, and there's that. I saw a great line in a book once. Uh, I read years and years ago. It was called um, ET 101, I think it was called, and it described the new age as uh, people who were in a holding pattern above the airport, refusing to land. Right? And I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Now, um, when I say new age, I'm talking uh, about this whole area where everything's love and light and you mustn't say anything negative and, and, and what have you because that's, that's bad for the energy and what they end up doing is nothing um, and you know I, I love this thing where they say um, you mustn't say anything negative well something that's negative is actually subjective right um, if, if I look over your shoulder and I see a tornado coming now is it negative for me to say hey Behind your shoulder, tornado coming. What, what's your gonna reaction gonna be? Ah! But I've empowered you. It's coming, it ain't here yet. You can take evasive action. Is it more negative to say nothing and then when it hits you, you're up in the air? Well, I didn't spoil the energy by frightening it. No! You know, she's going bum overhead. <laughs> 30 feet in the sky! What do you mean? Uh, it's not negative. It's crazy. Yeah. It's all part of I don't want to face what is. Yeah. And, and if we don't, then what is never changes, but actually becomes more powerful in its influence over our lives. And we're now in this line in the sand uh, called mass swine flu vaccination programs, not swine flu, it's the laboratory flu, um, concocted. But um, this is a point where we can now come together, irrespective of race, color, income bracket, culture, whatever, religion, and, and say, hey, this is a challenge, this is a manufactured danger to all of us, and if we stand together and say, we're not having this, they, uh, the manipulators, the perpetrators, simply have nothing like the numbers, fractions of the numbers of humanity which they're trying to impose this upon. And they can only do it if we acquiesce. And um, uh, if we do that, then we're gonna throw a massive, we're gonna do two things many things, two big things. We're gonna throw a massive spanner in the works of this control system, because this mass vaccination and what's in the vaccination is a major part of the, of the ongoing advancement of this control system. And we're gonna show people who, maybe for the first time in their lives, stand up and say, I'm not having, I'm little me, but I'm not having that. They'll realize they're not little me. And, and they do have the power to influence and control their own reality, but only if they take it. So this whole swine flu thing, which is coming up very fast, it's a wonderful opportunity to, for people to realize who've not thought about it before, that they have the power to stop this far, far from all powerful control system. I mean, the control system is there because we're holding it together. We're holding it up. We have people in administration of the system in dark suits. We have people in, um, in, in position and enforcement of the control system in uniforms who haven't got a clue what the control system is designed to do. They don't realize that their children and grandchildren are in its sights as well mm -hmm. and that every day they are administering into reality and enforcing upon people the control system that is designed to um, ensnare their own families. So those people too, crucially, need to see this information so that they can have a word with themselves and say, 
how do I look my children in the eye and my grandchildren in the eye a few, uh, I say years, it's not that, sometime in the future, near future, and have to explain to them how me, their dad, granddad, grandma, mother, actually played a fundamental role in imposing upon them the system that now controls every area of their lives, including their thoughts, because that's the idea. Um, and if people don't want to have to face that question and that realization that that's what they've done, then they need to start opening their minds and opening their eyes and seeing what they're doing. Because my question is, what the hell are you doing? Imposing a fascist global state upon your own families. If you don't care about anyone else and you care about your families, well ask them, uh, yourself why you're doing it to your own family. And, and, and if those people can start to break ranks and say, sorry, I ain't doing this, then the system starts to collapse. Because you've got those that are administering and enforcing the system uh, pulling, pulling the bricks out, and you've got the people that, that are supposed to be the, the targets refusing to acquiesce to it, these people are in desperate trouble then, desperate trouble. We still have the power, the overwhelming power, to bring this system down. Let no one kid you that that's not true. Uh, and and um, we, can, we can use this swine flu vaccination imposition horror as the line in the sand where we come together and, and we start massively the process of doing that. And I tell you, if people don't do that now, they deserve what they get. They deserve what they get. And I tell you what, they're going to get it if they don't, do, if they don't stand up now.